Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at this, the Nest Pi case for a Raspberry Pi, which has been sent to me for review by my friends at Retroflag. Now, as you probably guessed, this makes a Raspberry Pi look like a NES, a Nintendo Entertainment System console. So let's go and take a closer look. Well, here we have the uh, Nest Pi case, and as you can see, even the box is made up to be looking like a Nintendo Entertainment System console. These, these colours are sort of, there's something very computing retro about these particular greys, isn't there? Anyway, you might want to know what this thing costs, and the answer to that right now, which is in January 2018, is this is priced at $23 on Amazon.com and £25 on Amazon.co.uk. But be aware the price of these seems to change greatly, so shop around if you want to buy one of these cases. Anyway, let's get inside. I think it should be a fairly straightforward box, even for me. Yes, it is, and it does hopefully slide, does it? Yes, it does. Ooh, aha. It's, it looks like a piece of computer equipment made years ago, but of course it isn't. Here we have our, well, there's some extra things in there. Let's have a look. What is everything here? Um, well, there's some instructions. As I'll show you in a second, this is quite a sophisticated case. This isn't just a plonk of Raspberry Pi inside. What on earth is this? Oh, it's another screwdriver. It can't be Mr. Screwdriver. It'd have to be uh, maybe this little Miss Screwdriver, given that colours. Anyway, let's have a look. And um, yes, this looks really nice, doesn't it? So basically, this is a just like a, a, a Nintendo console. It's got a little flap on the front, but that houses USB ports and, and Ethernet. It's got more USB down here. Reset and power buttons, look. And uh, on the back, we have a HDMI and um, audio jack and power will go in. But it's all wires up with a circuit board and stuff like that. So let's have a closer look inside. And there seems to be, uh, yes, there's a little packet. Uh, this has got some, some screws, you should have guessed that. And as you can see, this basically um, expands things out. So the Raspberry Pi goes in. Let's just show you a Raspberry Pi. I've got a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think this is a Raspberry Pi 3, it is. This thing will fit a Raspberry Pi 3. It'll also fit a, a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus. I've heard a Raspberry Pi 2, haven't got one of those out today. It'll also fit a Tinkerboard. You can put lots of different things in this case, but we'll stick with a Pi 3. And the basic way it works, if we just uh, get all these things out of the way, is that the Pi has its HDMI connector and um, connector for audio, if you're using it coming out the back. And just get that in there. There we are. Like, get in your little swine. How's it? Oh, probably best not to have an SD card in your Pi when you're doing this, Chris. That's what it is. Yes, if you take the SD card out first, it fits so much easier. That's a surprise, isn't it? So that will go in like that in there, and then the way it gets powered, or do you? You flicked off screen, and the way it gets um, powered is via the GPA open. It doesn't use the Pi power connector. It actually uses the power connector um, a bit lower down which powers this board at the front. So this is a case and a half. So this actually goes on the GPIO block to power from pins four and six. Let's put it on, let's be wild, just seeing how it's all gonna to fit together. That'll work on there. And then as you see, basically you have a USB hub on the, on the front here. So you only connect to one of the USB ports via this connector there, and that would go in and um, in there. And then your Ethernet connection, also Ethernet connection, how are we gonna say it today? Um, I'll say it right next time. Um, that also goes in to the board and just obviously it's just a straight extension lead, nothing, nothing fancy going on there. That goes in like this. I'm just excited with this case. This is a very nice, nice idea, isn't it? Let's put the connectors where people want them as opposed to put the connectors where we're normally forced to have them, isn't it? And uh, getting this right is fiddly, isn't it? But never mind, that goes in there. And uh, yeah, so that would basically wire up like that. And as you see, it's a, it fits the, the Pi 3. Uh, I just want to check it does fit a tinkerboard, so I'll just uh, try that out as well. And uh, yes, as you could see, you could put a, a tinkerboard in here because it is a Pi compatible computer. Get in there, you little swine. Got it in this. There we are. That's how that would fit in, in there. Uh, only difference here, the tinkerboard has to have its uh, Ethernet connector the other way up, but otherwise it goes in. I should point out there is a connector for a fan here on, on the board, and if we look in the top of the case, then there is a, a place you can have the fan, I think a 30 millimeter fan, if you have a fan. It doesn't come with a fan, but you could fit one if you wanted to. 
Anyway, I think I'll flick this back to a, a Raspberry Pi 3 and actually put it together. And uh, with that in, and as you probably saw, I lost the, uh, the heatsink off a tinkerboard doing that. Do you know, twice in a row here I've had the problem of um, not fitting the, not taking out the micro SD card. If you're fitting a, a computer in this case, take out micro SD card first. Anyway, let's now put some screws in. And uh, there we are, we've got the Raspberry Pi 3 secured in the case. The only since we supplied two of these little black screws to, to put it in, but that uh, it's absolutely solid with that. And so all I've got to do now is to put the case on top, the case on the case, if you see what I mean. That goes on like, uh, like that and uh, somehow fastens down there. What have I done wrong there? Must have got something slightly wrong. Oh dear, Christopher wasn't paying attention, was he? No, this is a video about how not to use this case. This screw should not have gone in there at all because this screw, I should not be criticizing you for lack of screws. It's because I've not done it properly. Deary me, if I'd done it properly, everything would have been fine. So let's uh, put it in the correct place. These black screws go at the back. Took a little bit of uh, getting in there. And I now see these bits at the front fit on the other bit of the pie. So that goes on top like this and now fits perfectly. Isn't it strange how things fit perfectly when you do them right? And the other screws will go underneath. And uh, finally, I'll just remove a little bit of the uh, plastic. This is all very nicely done. And uh, have a proper look at it. There they are. Those come off as well. Oh, no, 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 no expense spared in making this work. And you probably notice underneath, there's also this little container where you can take it off. You used to store cartridges there for uh, a Nintendo. Here you would store a, a micro SD card could be stored in here for the Pi, if I can find that one. Well, I could go in there and you put that back on the top with a little retro flag label. I do like that. So there is our uh, retro Pi case in uh, all of its glory. And uh, as we said before, we've got on the front the USB ports there, nice and handy, and a couple more in the little flap. I could play with that flap for hours. I don't think many people actually use the uh, Ethernet port there, but it is there if you want it. And uh, we have got the, uh, the buttons down here, the reset and power buttons. These are soft reset and power buttons that will turn on power to the Pi, uh, the adapter will plug to the back of this thing. It's not a way of turning it off. You want to close your Pi down and then use that to turn power off for the machine. We'll see it on in a second. And uh, as we saw before, we've got on the back the uh, HDMI and um, audio sockets if you want to use them. And then what was the power thing down there? Final thing we'll just show you, which works very nicely here, I think, is the uh, slot for the micro SD card. And you'll see we can easily slot a card in here. Very, very straightforward. That's hardly a surprise. You can also get it out easy, though. If this was a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus or a 2 or a Tinkerboard, we could just soft touch and it would fling out. But of course, that doesn't work on a Pi 3 for some reason. They got rid of a spring mechanism. But you can very easily just take the card out. And uh, I think it's great to have a Raspberry Pi case where you can easily get your micro SD card in and out. Anyway, I think we should now just power this thing up, check it works, and do a little bit of retro gaming. And here we are. The Pi is now all connected up and powered up in the uh, NES case. You can see the nice little uh, red LEDs on there. And I've got a Rai i8 dongle plugged in front to control it wirelessly. And guess what? I'm playing Pac-Man. OK, you cry, Chris, that's not a NES game, and you're absolutely right, although I'm sure there must have been some version of Pac-Man from a NES at some point. But here, I'm actually running the DOSBox emulator and running a program called Pac-PC. And if you want to know how to do this, look at my uh, Raspberry Pi Windows 3.1 video where I showed you how to set up DOSBox and do things like this. But uh, I think it's nice to see the, uh, the NES case there running with the... Uh, Pack PC is just showing what it looks like to be running a, a retro game. One point I would make is that to use this case, you should plug in a decent power supply to the Pi. This has clearly got a USB hub in it to bring the USB ports to the front. That takes a bit of power. I did initially try using this with a very low power power adapter, just a 1.5 amp one, which I thought would be absolutely fine. It wasn't, the Pi became a bit unstable. I'm now running here with a two amp adapter as the actual standard Raspberry Pi adapter now that runs absolutely fine. So if you have any problems with stability with this case, just look to your power supply.
Whether or not you're a retro gamer, the NES Pi from Retroflag is a very nice case which keeps a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Tinkerboard looking very cool when it's standing next to your television. It's also a case that manages to keep the HDMI lead and power leads to the back and puts the USB ports at the front, which is very handy and something I can't think of as being achieved with any other Raspberry Pi case. Although of course if it is, you will let me know about it down in the comments section. But now that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed the video, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.